Hello, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I decided to go live today for two reasons. Um, I've been trying to do Sunday afternoon lives for fun, just to have the community, the chatting and answering questions. But yesterday we we're celebrating my husband's birthday. And then today is a holiday for some people. So I was hoping that um, if we went live today, that some of you could join. So uh, I thank you for all being here. I do have a special guest today. You wanna to come over here? Good luck getting around all my stuff. Here's my special guest, because she doesn't have school today. So Lila is here with us. Say hi. Hi. And she wants to craft. So if you saw my last Sunday Crafternoon, you saw that Mike was trying to set up an overhead camera so that she could make something too. We set one up, but I'm warning you, it's not the best setup. She doesn't have sound over there, so she can't talk over there, and the lighting isn't great. But, you know, if this works out, maybe we'll get that all set up better, right? If you pay me more, I'll set it up better. Yeah, Mike said if I pay him more, he'll set it up better. So, the plan today, I'm not sure how well this will go, because, you know, I have a hard time, like, chatting live and creating live. Well, we're going to throw a third thing into the mix, and that's her creating live, too. So we're going to do our best to do things at the same time, but hers is pretty self-explanatory. So what I think I'll do is I'll have both of us creating on screen at the same time. And when I see that she's doing like a new step, I'll explain what she's doing. And then hopefully we'll get her set up with a mic at some point, right? Okay, so um, we're using Hero Arts today. Um, Lila... Uh, has known of Hero Arts since she was a bitty baby because I used to work with them for many, many years. So, um, man, I was working with them before Colin was born. So, like 20 years ago, I started working with them. And um, I, they will always be my favorite company because the people there are so good. And so I was really excited to go live with them. I've known them the longest. Time. Yes, you have. You have. So, and you've heard a lot about Aaron over the years, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um, they're not joining today because I don't have my act together to do that. But at some point I do want to have Aaron on because Aaron, they're going to be celebrating 50 years this year. And I wanted him to explain like the history of stamping, like how it all came about. Cause he's, he, his mom started Hero Arts, Hero Arts many years ago and he remembers her making stamps in their bathroom. So we'll have him on someday, but today we're just using Hero Arts, and they offered a really fun um, free gift for you all. I told them I was going to go live, and they have a great free gift. If you look at the top of my description, you'll see it says for a visual supply list, and if you click that, it'll take you to a page where all the supplies I'm using are, and this information is there too on how to get this free gift. So it is a stamp and die bundle. And you get that free if you use that code um, uh, in $25 order at Hero Arts, which I think is super generous. I'm going to show you. I have it right here. If I can switch. Hang on. There we go. So mine has been well loved, but this you get the die, which is a great size for a card. Um, I've used that one many times. And then the sentiments that go with it. So you can see it's a nice, nice proportions, right? So this is what you get free. Uh, with orders of $25 or more, I think it's through the 25th, yes. all of that information is in my description below. But if you click that visual supply list, you'll see the information about this free gift. Be sure to use that code. And also anything that Lila or I talk about today. Because we love our hero arts, don't we? Okay, so um, I'm going to show you first what, and I'm going to try my best to answer questions. But Chances are it's going to be really hard. I have two cards I'd love to make, and she's got one she'd love to make. So we're going to try our best. So please give us a little grace as we figure ourselves out, right? We also put the supply list in the description. Mike did. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thanks. Get your stuff, Oh, here. Where's your, where is your stuff? Go get it. What's Bring it over here. You're, I'm going to show everybody what you're using today. Because um, we're going to actually, Mike, you have to remember to pick somebody who leaves a comment in the chat. Okay. Um, leave, leave comments in the chat, 
And Mike is randomly at some point during this live going to pick a winner to win this combo that uh, Lila is using. So this is what Lila has. And you'll see how cool it is. It's a tulip pattern. So it's tulip pattern. There is a die and there are layering stencils and you can use them together or separately. And there's a few ways to do it. Lila loves layering stencils. In fact, one of her best friends was here yesterday and Lila was teaching her how to do it. And um, she was a champ right off the get go. Anytime you want to turn somebody into a, like a, somebody into a crafter, like a newbie, start with layering stencils. They're so rewarding. So she's going to do some flower tulips, right? Or rainbow tulips, yeah. rainbow tulips. So she'll do the stenciling and then we'll come back together to incorporate the dye. And these are the inks she's using. So you'll be able to watch her on half the screen. She's using Azalea, Butterbar, and Paradise. And she's going to get a rainbow from that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And watch as she's creating, because I'm going to be creating too. So it's going to be kind of hard for um, me to watch her too. But when one of the nice things about let me grab a piece of cardstock. One of the nice things about these hero art stencils is notice there's these little holes on the corners. Those are like registration marks. So look at each of the stencils will line up there. So what you can do is she'll put this down on her paper, draw in each of those little squares with um, pencil mark. And then when she's ready for the next stencil, she just lines up those squares and she knows that she's got it lined up. Or we can put it in the corner. Yep. Or put it right in the corner. And every time if you put it right in the corner, you know it's going to line up. So she'll use one of those methods. But um, And Hero Arts does number theirs too. And the technique she's doing is something that you can do with any layering stencils. But So she's going to be using the tulip pattern. These are the ink colors she'll be using. We're going to set her up. You want to take these back to your spot. She's going to probably get started while I start talking about mine. Let's see here. Let's see if I can get... Now remember, there we go. There's her spot. Okay, now remember, her spot, the lighting's not great, and we don't have sound for her, but this is... We're doing, we're doing the best we can, right? Okay, so what I have, I have two very different things I wanted to possibly use today. Should I get started? You can get started, sure. Because you'll be faster than me, I assure you. This girl can create fast. I thought I would use HeroScape. Um, this is the Breath of Spring HeroScape bundle. Now, HeroScapes are a product from Hero Arts where you have like these layering and building images that create a scene that has a lot of has like a realistic look to it. And they have many of these. In fact, in that supply visual supply list, I put all HeroScape so you can see all the different options. Mike, do you have the image of the the ocean one that I sent you? I texted you earlier. I don't think you did. If you can find it and yeah. tell me when I can show it. But there's many of these available. Oh, I didn't send it to him. Hang on, let me send it to him and he can try to uh, show it on the screen here. Just one second. Okay, so they've had many of these over the years, um, and I've used them in videos in the past, but I really like this one because it's kind of a spring sky that you could add other things in. So this will give you the grass, some flowers in the grass, and the sky. And keep in mind, you could use the sky only. So if, say you're doing a scene with little critters and a die-cut grass, you could use this up at the top of the panel, and it's just a fun cloud look. Um, and then there are coordinating dies for all these images. So if you wanted to, you could cut the grass out to pop it up to give it some dimension. And then it also allows you to cut out different the different sentiments. Okay? And Lila is doing multicolor with the tulip pattern. So let's see. Can I do just her? There we go. So that's Lila. This is what I should do, just sit here and talk while she does all the work. What Lila is doing is the first layer of the tulip pattern layering stencils. She did the yellow in the middle, and then she'll come and add the pink at the top and the pool color at the bottom, making sure to overlap with that yellow and she'll end up with a rainbow blend. Look at that. And she's using Gina K brushes because Aunt Gina, you know, got to represent Aunt Gina. <laughs> so um, and what she's doing, you can do with absolutely any inks that you may have. Um, Mike, did you get those images or no? You're yeah. still working on it? Yes. Can you show them real quick? 
I just wanted to show you, I don't, I can't find this set in my stash. Therefore, I... Can you be a little... Oh, a little what? Because I can't... Uh, Hold on, that's not it. Hang on. I'm just sorry. a second. I gotta that's actually show it. something in order to... Hang uh, on, he's working it. on it. He's working on it. Which one? The stamp set. Drag that one in there. There it is. Okay, so that is the other one that I had considered using today. Uh, it is like an ocean, and look at all the different options you can do. It is used very similar to the one that I'm doing today. See how you could use the clouds by themselves? And then there's like the ocean water. You could also do that and make it look like little hills or like grass. And then the, all the other different images you can use with it. So there are some great examples with that set over on the um, Hero Arts website. I couldn't find that in my stash today. How was that? Yeah. So I'm gonna use the spring, the spring one. All right, Mike, can you put us back on here? Lila's finished her part. Can you put us back mm -hmm. on? Oh, okay. Lila's finished her part. See, I told you she's faster than me. So she did a rainbow over stencil one, and she did a light hand. Now she's gonna come in with stencil two. Are you gonna use the same ink pads, Lila? Yeah. Yep, and she'll just do heavier, and that will add some detail. So same thing. Um, same colors, but stencil number two with the heavy hand. All right, so I'm gonna get a, get going here because I need to create something too. So I will be using, again, the uh, Breath of Spring HeroScape. The HeroScapes are what Hero Arts calls these great layering images. And I have not made this yet, so I can't promise that it'll go swimmingly. Let's just say that. Hi, Betsy. Okay, so this is just white cardstock. It's cut bigger than I need and I'll trim it down. And I'm starting with the sky and I'm gonna do that kind of up in the top corner. It'll just make it easier to trim down when I'm ready. And I will put this into my Misty stamping tool. In my Misty here, I have a waffle flower grip mat that will just help to hold everything in place, but I'm still using the magnet because I'm nervous and I wanna make sure everything stays put. Okay, so I'm gonna use dusty blue first. Dusty blue is a nice sky blue. Now I just re-ink these, just like moments before I came on. And so please understand they might, this might stamp super juicy because I just, I just re-inked them. Okay, so usually you want to let it sit for a little bit, but you know, this is what happens. Yeah? On my second stencil. She's on stencil number two there. She lined up the little marks, the pencil marks in the corners. And I'm stamping this first image with um, dusty blue. Again, it'll probably be pretty splotchy because I did not um, give it time after I re-inked. Now I'm coming in with mist because this was this gives me a, like a, a dusty blue, right? And I wanted to make it a little more um, kind of pop a little bit more. So I'm coming in with mist, which is um, a little more, I guess you uh, more of a pool color. And I thought if I overlap the two, it would give me a really pretty color. Yes, Lila is a pro at layering stencils. Let's just say that. All right, so there we go. I have a little fuzz on my stamp. So you can see a little line here, but I'm not gonna worry about that. So now I have my sky. So you could do a little critter down here, whatever you want. Now keep in mind, Hero Arts inks are a dye ink that has like, that kind of blends and softens and smooths out as it dries. So that will give you beautiful solid image. Okay, so that was layering dusty blue and mist. And you could use absolutely any colors that you want. Oh, you know another thing you could do? I'm gonna do this and probably regret it, but hey. It's fine. Is, what'd you say? I said it's fine. And it's fine, and it'll all work out. Another thing you can do, hi Kathy Zilski. Um, another thing you can do is come in with a darker blue. This is cornflower, which is a beautiful, here, let me do it direct to paper so you can see what it looks like. It's a beautiful blue, look at that. One of my favorite colors. What I'm gonna do is just use a blending brush to apply a little bit of that cornflower blue up on the top edge only and stamp it, and that'll give us a little bit of more dark color up in the sky. So see how you can get that? Now you could repeat the process and make that even darker, but I'm just gonna, Stop with that. No, I think I'll do one more time. All right. All right. What do you got, Lila? I did the layering stencil too. Oh, look at that. So she used the same ink colors, but did light-handed the first 
with over the first stencil and heavy handed over the second and she gets the fine detail of those tulips. So now she'll come in with stencil number three. She'll probably clean her stamp first because she's a better crafter than I am. So she's misting it with some out rubbing alcohol and then she will wipe it with a dry cloth. Yes, Lila was very excited about this. Very, very excited to be able to do this. And look at that, I got a little ink. Every time I go live, I get that little bit of ink. It seems to be my thing. Can you see that or not? See that little bit of ink? If you take a paper sander, you can sand that little bit of ink off. If it's like a fingerprint, you can sand it off and nobody will ever know. Also, I'm about to do some green stamping on top of it. So that'll help too. Okay, so much better. Here, I need my other ink. All right. Oh, you need the greens. Yes, I do. Oh, I'm about to use them. So you're going to wait for a second. That's okay. Fine. Is that okay? That's fine. Here, I'll put it to me first. And then once I'm done with the green inks, she's going to use the same colors. We chose the same colors. Okay. So I am doing the grass now. And I, you could make this go really far down. You, you know, more sky if you want. I'm going to put it so there's just a little gap there because I want to end up putting a sentiment that will fall right there. So this is the first of the grass. And by the way, you can follow the instructions on the back of the stamp set. It comes with instructions on how to do this. But you know me, I'm just gonna wing it. I'm using Kiwi. Again, I just re-inked this. And I know we're doing a lot today and throwing a lot at you. But you guess what? You can watch the replay anytime you want. And somebody said, please tell you about we can only see the little marks like that if you put the card, pick up the card and put it closer. Oh, okay. Okay, yes. Somebody said it was hard to see my little fingerprint. I could see it. I got to hold it up better. All right. So okay. there we go. So I did that in Kiwi. Now here's the thing. When I stamp layer images, I'm gonna tell you something. Whenever I stamp layering images, after I stamp one, and I'm gonna stamp right on top of it, I like to heat set it. The reason is it'll give you more crisp results. If you don't, it'll blend into each other a bit, and I want this to be crisp, so I'm gonna heat set this. Sorry if it gets loud. Dee is here, hi Dee, and Brianne. So many, Vicki, so many great friends. Thank you all for being here, I appreciate it. Um, the Kathy is, uh, Kathy, uh, Lila made a chicken for Kathy, a crocheted chicken. Well, finally, C Kathy, she's working on a goat for me. I've been asking for a while. Lila's going to come back, but she's waiting for these green inks. Actually, I can bring her back. Here's your gr first green ink. That's oh, the one that goes uh, the lighter of the two colors. All right, so I can bring her back. We were using the same green inks. So I just heat set that so that when we, yeah, you're on screen. Right. Um, so when I stamp on top, it'll stay nice and crisp. Now I'm going to take this, and I don't know if you can see, but can you, I'm not sure if you can see, but you can move it around and easily see when it lines up with the stamping, stamped image you already did. And the nice thing about the HeroScape stamps is they don't have to be lined up perfectly. They're very forgiving. Also with this one, the opening, see the openings for the flowers that we're going to do in a moment? There's openings on the image and on both images. So you can just line those up and makes it easier. So I'm gonna just line up those little openings. Sorry if my gray hairs get in the way. All right, so here we go. This time I'm using Fresh Lawn, which is one of my other favorite greens. I have a few favorite greens and Fresh Lawn is definitely one of them. Um, I'm gonna ink up that, this is the layering image. Ink this up and stamp this. Again, I just re-inked this. Oh, look at how that instantly becomes amazing. Very little effort. And again, Hero Arts has lots of these, Hero Escapes. So if you're looking for like maybe a different scene, I would check them out. And I have done videos with Hero Escape images in the past or stamp sets in the past. All you have to do is go to my website and search on Hero Escapes and you can see lots of images. And if you have a Hero Arts, um, Hero Escape set like this or anything, you can do these techniques we're doing today. Okay, next we're gonna do the flowers. Now, I'm not gonna heat set it because the flowers are just gonna fill in those white spots. So there's no reason, we don't have inks overlapping, but you could heat set it if you want to. And Lila is doing Kiwi 
right? Over mm -hmm. the third stencil, is that where you are? Yep. So she's... I did kiwi for the first layer of the grass and then fresh lawn on top of it, which is a great green. Um, I have a few favorite greens from different companies, but from Hero Arts, that's one of my favorites. I use it so much, I re-ink it quite often. Um, by the way, I used to never re-ink my ink pads. You probably heard me years ago say that. The reason I do now is because when you do ink blending with inks, it uses more ink. So since ink blending with brushes has become something people do more now, right? We didn't really have the tools available before. It requires they be re-inked more often. Okay, so next I have the little flowers, but I'm gonna go steal from Lila. So hang on just one second. I got your green. Hello. Oh, look at that. That looks great. So I just um, did the third stencil. Yeah, she just did the third stencil. Um, yeah, Hero Arts, Hero Scapes is what Hero Arts calls theirs, where you create these scenes. So they're not going to be like a flower. They're going to be a scene. They have like the ocean scene. They have a lake scene. They've got, you name it, they've got lots of them. Now, um, she is cleaning stencil three, and then she'll move on to stencil four and use fresh lawn. Can you hand that to her? We're on opposite sides of the room here, so that's why we have to pass back and forth. Okay. Now... I could stamp all of these flowers in the same color, but I thought I would do uh, what Lila did and blend some colors together. So I'm going to put towards the, I'm going to try to stay in here, towards the center here, I'm putting yellow. This is Butter Bar, which has, Hero Arts has had Butter Bar for so many years, and it's a color that I reach for very, very often. It's a like a very warm very warm um, yellow, got a little bit of orange feel to it, just a little bit. It's a very inviting yellow. So notice how those really just stamped in the middle, but a little bit here and a little bit over here. So we did a little more than a third of that area. Okay, so there we did the butter bar. Now we're going to come in with the pink. This is the azalea, and this time I'm just doing the hat, this edge here, and I'll overlap a little bit with where I did the butter bar. Oh, I did it the opposite side. That's okay. Doesn't matter. So see where the the pink and the butter bar overlap, you get an orange. So now um, I'm coming in with just the pink there on the edge, just to make it a little more vibrant. And look at that. You're getting a rainbow of colors going across. Now the reason I, you'll notice that, I think I'm going to do corn flour for my last one. Now you'll notice when I put down my blue ink on the edge here, I then come in with a blue blending brush and just kind of tap that edge so you don't get a harsh line of where the ink ended, where your inking ended. So there you can see there's a blue flower there. Now where the, the corn flour and the butter bar overlap, it's going to go green, right? because we're overlapping blue and yellow. So you kind of will lose those flowers in the green grass, but that's okay. All right, ready? Yep. All right, Lila's doing the big reveal on hers. There we go. There we go. Here, can you bring it over here so we can get good light? Yep. All right, Let me just do a little more here, one, one more blue. All right, there we go, look at that. Isn't that fun? All oh, right, wow. and here, look at Lila's. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. All right, now let me finish my scene, and then we're going to come back to Lila's. Yep. Do you want to do another one? You could do different colors. Do you? Mm -hmm. Go for it. You can do another one. Pick any colors? Yeah. Okay. Here's all the, right here's a bunch of the colors you could use. I got to clean my other stamp or stencil. Okay. All right, so... Isn't she good? I'm telling you, she's going to put me out of a job. Okay, so I've done all of those images except the little centers of the flowers. So for this one, I'm going to come in and line this up. Again, this is pretty forgiving. And for the center of my flowers, I'm going to do like a caramel color. Am I still on screen? Actually, let's do fawn. Yeah. I am? Yeah. Do you want me to turn it off? Okay, so here's, I'm going to try fawn first, which is like a yellowish brown. I don't know that it's going to be dark enough. 
Let's see. Here we go. That's good. You can also do a little white in there, whatever you want. And now look at that. Isn't that great? Very easy to do. Very easy to do. Lila, some, uh, let's see who said that. Um, I can't. How does the Dev Shelty mom said, Lila, you can support me in, ret in my retirement with your crafting. <laughs> what, Mike? I don't know how to do it. Oh. Okay, now another thing we can do is add little dragonflies or we can add little bees. I'm not sure where I want my sentiment yet, so I'm going to wait to do that. Where is your um, your right here? Okay, so I have this stamped. You could do more. You could take the um, the sky and stamp it again, but offset. But I'm I want to leave this as is. I'm not going to be overly ambitious today. Now I'm going to do a fun kind of window card. So just bear with me on the sizes that I'm doing. You'll see why in a moment. Now I'm going to trim a little bit off the top here because I didn't go right up to the edge. And I'm going to cut this to four by five and a quarter. Okay. Now I know there is white down here. What I could do is stamp the grass stain again, die cut it, and then put it on here and you have like a, more grass layered up. But I'm going to leave that so I can put a sentiment. Give me some good color ideas. Some good color ideas. How about in the comments? Yeah, Anybody guys. want to give Lila a um, suggestion on what color tulips to do on her next one? She's going to do another one because she's so fast. The Hero Arts. Yeah, so Hero Arts colors. But really, if you just say like purple, yeah, blue. general color families, she'll go for that. So I can do like one... One color, two colors, three colors, doesn't matter. Yep. Uh, next, I'm taking a note card. Again, just bear with me. You'll see why in a moment. I'm going to take a note card, and I am trimming it smaller. So this is a side folding card, and I'm going to take a quarter inch off each side so that it's the same size as the panel we just did. All right. We've got some answers. Whoa. Yeah, they're okay. gonna, the answers purple. will come flying in. <laughs> purple. Lots of purples. Okay. okay. You could do maybe purples and pink. Yeah, I think that's what people are saying. So now I have a note card with my sky, right? We do have a question, though. And they're both the same size. I'm going to glue these together, but I'm doing it upside down. So just stick with me. I'm going to put glue on the back of this. You'll see why in a moment. Yeah, we're doing purple and pink. So I'm going to glue this on so my card opens backwards. Just, I promise it'll work out just fine. So here we go. All right, and I'm gonna set that aside so that we can do the front of my card. This is where I'm not really sure what I'm doing. We're gonna wing it. How's that? And remember, if anybody's checking out Hero Arts, or even if you just need some inks or some basic tools, um, there is the free gift for $25 or more. You can get whatever you want over at Hero Arts. And keep in mind, Hero Arts has a lot of these what are called infinity dies. If you search on infinity on their site, a lot will come up. And what's cool about the infinity dies is it's like one shape and lots of sizes. So you can do stacking. A lot of people call them stacking dies. So they have circles, squares, rectangles, but then they also have cool shapes like this one that I thought I would use today. This is the rounded jewel infinity die. Um, and then there's another one I wanted to show you. This was the other one I considered using, the pointed arches infinity. This one I think would also work really well for the card design I'm doing today. I need to put these on a magnet so they're not all stuck. So I'm going to create a window. This would also work really well, but I think I'm going to go with this kind of wonky square instead. But these are two of their new infinity dies. I'm really excited about them. Something different than a square or rectangle, right? All right. So Lila wants to show you the color she's going to do. She's got cotton candy. Orchid and passion flower. Now, passion flower is a. These might need ranking. I don't know. Passion flower is like a pinkish purplish, like a. That's cool. It's got a little pink to it. So these are the colors she chose. Those will be pretty. You like those? You don't want that? She didn't like it. <laughs> Do you want a different pink? Let me give you a different. I know what you need. Bubble gum. Where's my bubble gum? I didn't find it. Or no, my, uh, where is it? No, Sweet Blossom. That's what goes with it. There you go. 
see. No, no, no. No, no, no. 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 Um, you want to change? Yeah. You know what might be pretty? Here, Lila. How about I this? Think, I think the pink and purple is pretty, but I don't know. What if you did this? These three. I guess it could work. Or those three. Those three. Those are. Yeah. So you're going to do Passionflower Orchid and Dusty Blue. Okay. See, we all have to have to try things out, don't we? Yeah, some of my inks have uh, moved on me. Okay, so I am now going to create the front of my card. I'm going to do a window opening. So basically what she's doing over there, what Lila's doing, she could, you could take any inks you want and just kind of blend as you ink over the stencil. Another thing you could do with the stencils Lila has is use small blending tools and do like um, each, you know, mix and ma mix up the tulip. So if you use a small blending tool, you can make one tulip pink and then the one next to it yellow and the one next to that blue and move around. It'll take more time, but it would also give beautiful results. So what I'm doing here is I think, let's see, I think I like that way better. We're winging it, folks. Gina Kay is good at winging it. Jennifer McGuire is not. So <laughs> we're going to try. Okay, so I have, this is a side folding note card, and I'm centering this towards the top. She's got my tape, so I'm going to just hope my magnet holds it. No, it's okay. And I am putting this on top here. Yeah, I think that's where I want it. Who knows? We might change our mind. Now I'm going to run that through my die cut machine. And so I'm using the Jewel Infinity, just for a different shape. But for this card that I'm doing, you could do a circle, you could do a square, a rectangle, whatever you want. So check that out. There's our window on the front of the card. Now I, I'm going to take another piece of, this is just plain white cardstock, the same size as the note card. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half inches note card. Now I'm just taking a plain piece. I'm going to line it up behind the front of my card. Let me see. I gotta, I'm not used to working on the square here. So I'm lining up that behind it. Do, do, do. There are a few different ways I could have done this, but you know what? We're going for it. Let me just line that up. Now I'm going to put that die right into the opening. Mom, I messed up. You messed up? What? How? I did this one first instead of the middle one. Doesn't matter. If you blend, if you blend, here, Lila's going to show you. She thought she did them in the wrong order, which is fine. But the key, remember what we always say with ink blending. The key is to overlap your colors. So you could take any of those colors. They're all close to each other in the rainbow. And as long as you, see how you got that lighter edge there, Lila? Mm -hmm. Yes. As long as you come in with the next color light over that and allow them to blend, you'll get a great blend. I'll show so she's going to show you that. Meanwhile, and I just moved it again, I have my white cardstock panel. Oops, hold on. I'm working on this. Oops, I lost Lila. There we go. White cardstock panel is behind this, and I'm popping the die into the opening. And I'm hoping it doesn't move because I don't have my tape. Let me run that through. So I'm not doing any partial die cutting or anything special. I'm just doing plain die cutting. Okay, so I did die. Yep. Yep. And you can put some more in that area where you overlapped if you want. It's up to you. Okay. So now I have a card and I have a panel with that window cut in the same spot. See how that lines up there? Okay. And I can save these for another card. I just think it's a fun shape. Look at that, see? It'll work. It's going to work. And if not, you can put the stencil back. Oh, I think that's beautiful. I love it. That's gorgeous. Now you can go on and do the same thing, but with a heavy hand on top. All right, I see lots of people in the chat very close to where we live. This Ohio must be the, because we have this terrible weather, it must be the place where people go to craft. Actually, the weather's not bad today. I shouldn't say that. Okay. Okay, let's see. Next, I have a piece of acetate. This was actually um, left over from some packaging. 
but you could buy clear acetate, but really anything here. Something a little bit thicker is good for today's technique. What I'm going to do is sandwich this between these two pieces. So I'm going to take some tape here. You good over there, Lila? Uh huh. So somebody asked how long you've been crafting. Lila um, started crafting right away. In fact, I had a video I shared on Instagram a long time ago. My friend Susan brought it up the other day of Lila in my craft room. She had just learned how to walk. She was like nine months old. She was an early walker. She started walking, well, actually running it at uh, eight months, was it? Eight, eight and a half months. And I have a video at like, she was nine months old standing in my craft room. I had all my envelopes in the bottom drawer. Yep. And she loved to just pull them out and throw them. And she would do it over and over and over. And people were like, I can't believe you're letting her do that. Well, listen, when you have a baby, sometimes you just let them entertain themselves. It was safe. It was fine. And it gave me an excuse to do rainbow order afterwards. So she used to love that. All right, so I put tape all around that window on the front of my card. And now I'm placing my acetate. So I have that acetate window there, okay? Now I'm going to put tape all the way around so I can add this to the front. All right. So Lila has been crafting for a long time. Colin used to craft with me. And really? yes, I have a video of him pretending he was Tim Holtz. And it was awesome. He talks about how he thought Tim Holtz was a better stamper. Than you? Than me, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he's right, but usually your son isn't the one who says that. We got Dayton here. Got Cle oh man, oh, Portugal. I'm gonna go to Portugal, that sounds more fun. Yes. All right, so now I'm going to place this on top and because I use liquid adhesive, I can wiggle it till I get it just right. And that will cover the whole front of our card. I could have left a trim and done a different color, but I like the white. So now I have this window on the front of our card. Let me get that glue off here, there we go. Which side is that glue on? Then, oh, it's not glue. What is that? Is it glue? Oh, it's coming off. Okay. Just got to rub that off a little bit. Okay. So now we have this acetate window. Okay. And of course, I got another smudge. Why do I do this when I'm live? I don't do this as much when I'm not live. Show them the smudge. Oh, the smudge was right there. It was a little green fingerprint. All right. I do that too. How long have I been crafting, Tina asks. Um, I started like 20, 23 years ago, I would say. And I started in scrapbooking and I switched. So now I have, this is my outside of my card. This is gonna go on the inside and show through that window, okay? Not, like I could go to town and add more to this, but I'm keeping this simple. What's wrong, Lila? I messed up. Hey, we mess up all the time, what'd you do? Um, so I forgot to do the blue, the second, the second layer on the second stencil. Yeah. I completely took it off and forgot to do it. That's not messing up. That's just you forgot to do it because you, it's not like you have to start over. There we go. All right. Okay. So this is getting glued in here upside down. And remember this is cut a little bit smaller than the outside note cards. The outside note card was four and a quarter by five and a half. This inside card is four by five and a quarter. So there's a little trim. So now the way this card opens is both ways so that you can have the window on the front, but then still be able to write a personal message on the inside. Perfect. Does that make sense? Here we go. All right, let's see Lila's. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty. I like it. Very cool. And the fun thing is you can layer the colors together in different ways and get completely different um, results. Uh, Island Girl asked what tool I use to remo remove smudges. These are paper sanders. Mike, can you add that to the supply yeah. list? I should always keep it on there because I always do this in lives. Um, it's an inexpensive tool. There's a bunch in a set. There's a lot of techniques you can do with these, but basically it's just the right amount of sand to sand away ink like your fingerprints. You know, just a little bit of ink. There are other sanding things out there, but I find this just works really well. Okay? So there is that. Now I am going to add a sentiment. I wanted my sentiment to float right here on the front of this. Now you know on if you want to stamp on acetate it can be kind of tricky. 
you could you have some choices you can use an ink like archival ink from Ranger or stays on and stamp on there but it's not going to give you a super crisp look usually the other thing you could do is make sure you use a heat resistant acetate and heat emboss which is fine but I don't know if what I used is heat resistant so I'm using Hero Arts transfers if you have never seen um, Hero Arts transfers in action I did a whole live on many things you can do with the Hero Arts transfers. These are rub-ons, but they're new and improved from what I, at least I used to use in the scrapbooking days years and years ago. Um, but th they're just great because you can add these images anywhere on a card. So you could have, you know, texture, you could have stamping and die cuts and all kinds, even clear pieces, and this will work on it. And this will work on like, you can put it on I think you can use them on fabric. You can use them on different surfaces. Um, yeah, paper, tile, acetate, wood. Now in this pack, this is called Sympathy Hero Transfers. There's a sheet with black images, and then there's a sheet with white. It's kind of hard to see there, but um, it's on the back of the package. I don't know if you can tell. So I thought I would use one of these sentiments and have it floating on that window. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking, who knows? All right, so I'm wondering, should I do, I could do a white. So this one would be a white rectangle with black letters. I think I'm gonna do the black. I think I'm gonna do the black sending hugs right there. So what I do is cut this out, just the one I want. And again, if you're new to these, Please check out that live that I did. I showed a lot of tips on these. And you know, I should probably have done this before I assembled my card because if I mess it up, you know, that's the way it goes. All right, so I just cut this out. It has a release paper on the back of it. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good? All right, you good, Lila? Good over there? Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm gonna go steal some, oh no, I'll just take some tape. Let me try to get a piece of tape here. I'm going to tape my card closed because I really need to get this straight on here. No, I'm good. I'm just going to tape this closed. Now remember, there are cool white rub-ons in here. So you could get, look at, you could do like a white, a white leaf floating on acetate over a dark background. This works great on vellum too. But I'm going with this black and white sentiment. Now I want to try to make this straight. We're going to, we're going to wing this, people. Okay. So you take your rub-on off of the release paper, like this. I'm going to place it right about, let's see. I've got to get my head over it. Sorry, folks. you got to look at my, my gray hairs. Don't count them. Nobody can count that high. Okay, so I'm going to press that down. Let me get it back in focus. Okay, see how it's pre press it down there. Then you take something like a bone folder, it actually comes with a popsicle stick in the packaging, but I just use a bone folder. And you're just gonna rub gently across it. Now, if you didn't already have your card assembled like this, you could actually run it through your die cut machine and it'll flatten it on. But my card's assembled and I don't wanna squish my hole. What's the name of Lila's stencil again? Lila's stencil is the tulip pattern. And remember, if Mike's gonna pick a winner and we're gonna send the stencil and die to a winner. This stencil? The, well, I have another one. Here we're yeah, oh, too. So watch, I can peel this off. I'm going slowly because if some of it doesn't transfer off of this onto my card, I can press it back down. And look at that. Look at that. So now, doobie doobie. Okay. Look at that. It's floating on there. Isn't that cool? I just love that. Are we ready for the final review? All right. Give us the final reveal, Lila. And then you gotta bring it over here so we can get a close look. Bring it on over, because the lighting's better over here for right now. All right, here, look at what she's got. Isn't that pretty? So she's done two backgrounds at <laughs> the time that I've done this one. Oh, thank you, Kim. She said, take Lila out for a special treat. And she gave us a super chat. So oh, Lila gets you. a special treat. You never gave me the cupcakes from last time. <laughs> Did you hear her? She said I never gave her the cupcakes from last time. She's a 
right. <laughs> okay, we'll go get cupcakes. We'll get okay, cupcakes. sure. Okay, so here we have... <laughs> such a stinker. All right, isn't that neat how that floats there now? All right, so I just... Keep in mind, there's lots of these different... I'm going to use... If I have time to do my next card, I'm going to use another set of these rub-on transfers. All right, let's finish off this card first. Um, where was I going next, Mike? Okay. She's done. She's done with those. Let me catch up, and then then I'll bring you back on. Okay. So next, I thought I would. I like these little bees. I think I want to do the bees, kind of like. That's pretty. Right up in there. So. Oh, I like that. Like that. That's so pretty. Now this one you could make several of at one time by when you do like the sky, you stamp it on multiple pieces. You know, do the sky on like five pieces of cardstock and then do the grass, you know, do each step along it. Okay, now I gotta think because I don't want to mess up. Okay. So I want them to show through right there. So I'm keeping my card closed, closing the door. Then I'm going to open it and stamp it in here. Sneaky watch. Yeah, a little angel on my shoulder. She, she should be telling me what I'm doing because I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to do my bees in black. Let's try the bees in black here. Somebody said, can I show, um, show them how the dye works? Yes. Oh, for Lila's? Yes, we are going to do that next. Oh, there's another super trap. Who did this? Thank you. You all don't need to do that. You're too kind. It is appreciated. I will take her to get cupcakes. <laughs> Way to throw your mom under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, so there we go. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Now, I'm going to tell you a few things that I'm going to do off screen because I want to... The rest of this is, the rest of this is pretty simple, and I want to show you some techniques with hers and mine first. So let me just tell you how I'll probably finish this, and I will take photos of this and put it on my blog in the next couple days. One thing I plan to do is take maybe, um, let's see, sending hugs. Maybe I'll do a little something just for you and stamp that right there. Or hold on, hold please. I really liked these. I thought these were this was a nice font. And since this is a basic font, I'm okay mixing another font. So um, sending hugs, I could do, I have a friend who um, is in between chemo and radiation. And so this would be nice and maybe stamp that right there. This is the Cosmos and Lavender. And I just really like those sentiments and there are dyes to cut them out that are available. So I will probably go in and add a little yellow into my bees, maybe, maybe not. And another thing I might do. Somebody said, "Don't forget Mike's potato chips." We yeah. ran out. Oh. Them all. I feed Mike a lot. He's fine. They said I need to buy you potato chips. Yep. Let's see here. What I'll probably do is take—I don't know where I put this particular die. I put it somewhere. I'll probably use the next size up oh. along with the size oh. window and glue a frame. So cut a real thin frame of black. And put it around it. Somebody Maybe. Else, somebody else. Did Nancy, it. thank you for this. <laughs> okay, I guess we're going to get potato chips and cupcakes. And cupcakes. <laughs> I assure you, we bought the wine from our the last one that we said we would do. So. What sentiment is Lila going to use? We're going to do Lila's Ooh. next. So that's how I'll probably finish that one up. Okay, but then you have a plenty of right place to write a personal space or a personal message, and then also keep in mind you can do any shape here. You could do stamping on the background, lots of things. And if you didn't want that bright white sky, you could do a little soft ink blending of light blue, but I like that bright white. I think it's nice contrast. Okay, so there's mine. Now Lila has some decisions to make. Oh, no. Where's your die? Do you have the die? Um, yeah, it's in my All right, I need the die. She's gonna get her die here. I also, heard, I also saw somebody say that um, this live is too fun. Yeah. Well, Lila's usually in school. Yeah, we were we saw that. Okay, so now you have a few options that you could do. Um, let me demonstrate 
I'm going to cut one apart. Is that okay? I'm going to cut this one apart. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is take the coordinating uh, die. I'm going to get some water. All right. So watch. This lines up with it, and we'll cut all of these out. And it cuts pretty tight up against it, so there's just a little bit of white trim, but not a whole lot. And I think I have one... I think my die was one of the first prototypes, so one of them might be off, but it's um, has since been fixed. So if you notice that, just be uh, the understanding of that. Um, Tammy asked what grade Lila is in. Lila's in sixth grade. Oh, I let it offset. I didn't tape it, but that's okay. Look at this. Look at how it cuts out all of these tulips. And now you could do like a wreath, or you could do multiple, like a little border on a card and do multiple cards with it. Mm -hmm. So you can use it to cut that out. Somebody else. Yeah. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Somebody else. Now let me show you the next one. I'm gonna move this to the side and I'm gonna show you what mm -hmm. I think. Let's see, what color, let's maybe, let's try, do you wanna try glitter paper? Yes. Ah, uh, thank you, I didn't see the name. Oh, did you see the name? Yes, I don't know. Oh, Gunsman? 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 I like the chocolate uh, base. You know the base? Cupcake? The cake yeah. part? Yeah. And then um, vanilla icing. Nice. She has a sweet tooth. I, I don't, but and she sprinkles. and her brother. Sprinkles. Ken and I do not have sweet teeth, <laughs> I guess you'd say. But she and Colin, boy, do they ever. All right, so, yeah, I owe Lila a lot. I know. <laughs> Isn't food and... and a roof overhead, good. Anyway, okay. So we're gonna see how glitter works. This is Altenew Diamond, Dazzling Diamond, I think, glitter paper. Um, this is one of my favorites because it's not silver, it's not gold, it's just like this kind of champagne Someone glitter. said chocolate covered donuts. That sounds delicious. Yeah, she likes donuts. Yeah, okay. So let's see, I'm gonna run that through twice. I don't still think right. I have, yes, I, hang on. I'm going to put the shim in, because this is pretty heavyweight glitter paper. I want to make sure it cuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Vicky. Vicky cupcakes. Pull off. Tur yep. Yes, Vicky. Can make it into a you can turn your cupcakes into a sandwich. Okay. So let's see here. Now look at this. We can now use the negative space of this, although I just... Hold some of it away, but we can glue it back together. It's fine. So now use the negative space and put it over. Oh, somebody mentioned crumble cookies. So now look at this. She can glue this over it. See? And then you have tulips <gasps> with glitter around them. Isn't that cool? Oh, I like that. Let's see if you can catch that sparkle. Do you see that sparkle? It's the most beautiful sparkle in real life. Eh, my new lights don't like the sparkle. So now, if you want to, Lila, you can glue that on over it, or you can leave it as is. What do you want to do? No, I want to glue that on. You want to glue that on. Let me get you another one. I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger. Are there any other questions in there? Let me see. I'm going to cut hers a little bit bigger because I cut it a little bit too small. See how I... I'm how trying are, to get all these out. I think it's your hero hue is different from the other thing. Okay, Hero Hues. First of all, I saw somebody, real quick, I saw somebody ask about what the free gift is. Check the top of the description. There's something that says Visual Supply List. If you click that, it'll take you to my blog where you can see all the supplies I'm using. Plus, it, um, it will tell you at the top about a free gift. So you can get that free gift there. It's a stamp and die combo that, here, I'll show you. This is what it is. This die and this stamp set. You cut my flowers. Yeah, I did. You cut my flowers. I did cut your flowers. That's I told you I was doing that. 
So now you can use those individual flowers. Why did you cut my flowers? I told you. What was it? I know you told me, but what was the point of it? So that you could use the individual flowers and leaves on a card. Oh. See? Look how it, nice it cuts it out. Okay. She has no... Nope. Okay, I did not answer you. I, let me answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hero Hughes inks. So these are called Hero Hughes core inks. Basically, they had dye inks and they had hybrid inks. They also have reactive inks. That's another line. But they, what they did is they went through and did a new collection where they brought all of their different dye and hybrid inks together into one line and just picked the best colors to give the best selection of colors. Now their hybrid inks are very dye-like, so I just use them all as, as if they're dye inks, but they're all very, I think they're all pretty pretty dye-like. Um, but they have a, a great solid set of colors that are tried and true over many, many years. So um, you, you might have known a long time ago they had shadow inks. Um, those have been kind of incorporated into this collection. So if you have some of their older inks, some of the colors might be similar. Like I know mm, Butter Bar was one they had a long time ago, and now they have it in their core ink line. It's just a great ink line, but today's techniques you could do with, with um, whatever line of inks you may have. Okay, so now Lila, is, she gets to, this will keep her busy for a bit, so I kind of do something too. I'm just trim this down a little bit so it looks nice. Somebody said, do you talk to yourself while you craft, or do you listen to anything? I like listening to true crime. I also like, like date lines and stuff, but I also like, there's a, a show on, I never had seen, I think it's Netflix. What was that called? Um, Love on the Spectrum. It is the most heartwarming show I have ever seen. I'm in such amazing humans. I highly recommend it. It's just, it's a feel good show. Amazing humans, amazing parents of these humans. It's a great show. Okay, Lila, yeah. I'm going to give you this. What Lila's going to go over and do is um, glue, put glue all over the back of this and line, <laughs> line it up on here. You know I go crazy with glue. Yeah, okay, Lila has a glue issue. <laughs> Lila loves glue, like Lila likes cupcakes. Another thing you could do, if you didn't want to take the time to put glue all over this to put on here, you could do a spray adhesive. But I don't love to do that. Or you could have put like double-sided tape or double-sided adhesive sheets like Altenew has on the card on the back of the glitter paper before you die cut, then it'd be a sticker. I just saw a question, but, but I didn't think about that. So Lila's gonna do this and I'll keep her busy for a while. Oh my. Okay, we have a few questions. I know, I'll try. It's fine. Here, take this over there. Hold on, there was a this is the last off. Uh, what's the question? Do you know what I do to get most of the pieces out of the dies? I just drop it on my counter, die facing down. If you drop it just right, most of the pieces fall out. So you know what I do? I hit it on the side of my counter. And all the die cuts go flying. And I just put something right at the edge if I want to catch them. But then it all ends up on the floor. Okay. Do you have like the, that roller that had a bunch of pokey things in it? Yes, I have that somewhere. That also gets one of, one of those from Spellbinders. That'll also get all those out. All right, let's go. We're going to do another. I'm glad to see other people um, watch that show too. Yes, all of these little, look at all of these, you could definitely use. These little glitter die cuts, you could definitely use on a card. You could even do like a pink die cut background and glue these in and lay these. So many different things so that you, that you could do. Okay. Um, what question, what sentiment is Lila going to use on her cards? Lila uh, doesn't know what sentiment she's using yet because she first has to go glue it together. And then we'll pick one, right? Yeah. And I'll get started on my next card. It's been an hour, I know. I totally understand if you can't stick around to watch. But hey, I'm hoping... Am I wrong? Um, no, I can put you on now. She's going to just glue that on there. So she's got Gina K Connect in a fine tip bottle. Um, and she's going to just glue that glitter die cut on top. Um, and look in the comments here because there are lots of ideas here of different ways you can use the product. People are sharing some good ideas of how you could use that tulip combo. And by the way, if you don't need the die, don't want the die with it and just want the layering stencils, you can do that. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to do one more thing, or at least get started, because I thought it'd be fun to show you. Um, I have, this is called the, oh dear, what's this called, Mike? This guy right here, flower, flower pattern, flower pattern die. I am a big fan of dies like this. You've seen me use many of these type of dies in the past. I was excited about this one because it has flowers that you can layer and do like a bouquet out of if you wanted to. Different types of leaves here, and there's butterflies. So this is one of those that I would really, I will go and just grab a handful of cardstocks. I have a bunch on my kitchen counter because I was doing these last night, and just cut as many as I can. So I did some over the weekend from different shades of pink. So I have a bunch of these done, and here's all my negative spaces. So all of these I can then use on other cards. So there's different ways you could layer and offset a bit. Let me show you layered and offset. I don't want a lot of glue on the table. That's okay. Glue on the table will go away. You're fine. Don't worry. That girl, the girlfriend loves to use a lot of glue. Okay. So you can always glue these two of these together and offset and see how you get that little bit of shadow and just glue it on a white card and you've got a background. So I have all of these left over that I can use on another card and then I have all of these flowers. And I just think this is a lot of fun to do. But I am going to form a back, uh, background using these flowers and laying it into a die cut. But first, I am going to use a rub-on on the background. All right, so Lila's gluing that. She's putting a heavyweight thing on it. Man, she's fast. <laughs> oh, she's putting me to shame. Okay, let me think here. Okay, I'm going to use some more of the rub-on transfers because I think they're fun. Let's see. I'm going to show you the black first. So there's a bunch of these different versions. There's even this one. I think this is cool, but I'm not going to use that one today. Um, this one right here, I'm going to let Lila... I'm gonna switch to me so that she can chill for a moment um, while I'm that just, dries. Hmm? I, I was just using this to put on. Oh, putting something there, yeah. No, that's fine. I'm just, I wanna be able to show the, the transfers. So this is the black uh, version. In it, it has this kind of mixed media looking text in different directions. There's a map, music, script, and uh, text. So, I, you're not on the screen right now, Lila. Okay, so I am using the same version, but in white. So it has all the same things in black in this pack, in this one it's white. This is called the White Collage Backgrounds Part 2 Hero Transfers. And I think I have all of that linked below. I'm going to choose one of these. You know what? I think I'm going to go with the definite. This script is really cool. Look at that. But I think I'm going to go with the friend. No. Should I do Vote for me. Should I do this friend definition? It's just text. Or do the script, but in white on the background. I think I'm going to do the script. I'm going to do the script. No, what? tell me. Let me know. Somebody tell me. Okay. I'm going to do one of those. Hmm, I don't know. This is going to be a very bold background. All right, I'm going to let... Some of these votes come in. Hopefully, there will be a votes. Yeah, I, I really like their rub on script. Okay, I'm, I saw a script first, so I'm going with script. Yeah, I'm with script. I really like their um, these transfers. I think Hero Arts has done a really great quality. They have colored ones too. I'm just showing you today. I'm keeping these little strips here because I can use these on a border, you know? So I'm going to keep this. Um, in that other video that I did, I um, have lots of tips, and I show you some of the um, the colored ones in there. And I keep these afterwards in a binder with like a a, sleeve, a clear sleeve that you load them in the top, and that's why that way I can keep them organized. Okay. Do you have any issues with those rubbing off? Mm -mm. No, I don't have issues with them rubbing off. I've never I've never noticed it. Has somebody else? No, someone just asked that. No. Nope. No, I've never had any issues with them moving off. Okay, I'm just going to place that down. I put scrap paper here so that I didn't have to cut it exactly, and I don't want to get it on my desk, because these will go on the, on the desk, because it's glass, right? So I'm just going to rub this across. One thing you can do is put this between your cutting plates, 
and run that through and it presses. These, I find these need a little more um, pressure, like I'm doing here, than the old rub-ons do because they don't want to, some of the old rub-ons, you would, like they would stick too quick, you know what I mean? Like you just touch something gently and that rub-on would be ruined. But these transfers I feel need a little bit more pressure, which is good because that way you can be very intentional about where, where you apply them. Let me just go right, I'm going to go right along the edge, which will kind of help cut some of that. All right. Let's see how we're doing. Not all transferred here. All right, hit me up with some questions here. Okay, there was one. Um, is, is, if one of the OGs can show us the bleach technique sometimes. The bleach technique. Yeah, there are great bleach stamping techniques. I haven't done it in a while. I don't love bleach. I don't think I own any. Now notice I'm not transferring all of it. See how some of it's not transferring so I can stop and just rub a little bit more. But honestly, this is, I'm not really concerned about it all because I want this to kind of be a um, sketchy kind of worn looking background because I think it's fun to have that, um, I don't know, contrast to the very con uh, very contemporary or modern style flowers that we're using. All right, hit me up, Mike. Okay, uh, can the glitter cardstock be ink blended? Oh, goodness. Um, can glitter cardstock be ink blended? Uh, yes, you can. You just have to go really dark with the ink. Uh, or you could use alcohol markers. I did a video on using alcohol markers on glitter cardstock, and it is super cool. Super cool. All right. I should have just run this through the die cut machine, but look at that. Isn't that fun? So bright white, super smooth. Next, I will take, I'm going to try something here. Never done this. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Uh, let's find my die. I'm going to cut from this background. Yeah. Let's give this a try. Why was it dry over there? She's not here. Oh, where'd she go? Oh, she's in the restroom. Bio break. Okay, let me run this through. So if you don't have rub-ons, for what I just did, you could instead stamp something along the back. Like you could stamp this with like a white ink and then do the die cutting and it will just add some texture. Or you could do like tone on tone stamping. Just a little extra something. Do you know where Lila went? Oh, she's in the bathroom. She is in the bathroom. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I'll be back before my Okay. So now I'm gonna pop these out. Now these flowers that I'm popping out, they have that script on them so I can save those for later. But I'm just using the negative space for this card. All right, as I pop these out, Mike, hit me up with more questions. Do you like doing mixed media techniques? Mixed media, yes, I do. I used to do a lot more, in fact. Like when I first started stamping, um, one of the biggest influences I had in crafting was Sherry Carroll. She worked at Hero Arts at the time. She now works for Simon Says Stamp. She is an amazing card maker, and she does beautiful mixed media stuff. And I found her like, <clears throat> and Tim Holtz and a few others really inspiring when I first started making cards. So I did a lot more mixed media back then. Um, I don't know. I just, for some reason, I, I just have kind of gone more colorful. But you can go very colorful with mixed media. So I do it sometimes. I've done a few videos on mixed media. Um, Hero Arts has, some, has a great mixed media Facebook group which I highly recommend checking out. Nicest people there, lots of inspiration on using non-mixed non media style products in a mixed media style way, but really mixed media. Everything I'm doing is mixed media here because I'm using multiple mediums. But if you want more of a true mixed media look, I recommend that Facebook group. Maybe Br if Brand's here, maybe she can put a link to that Facebook group because it's a really good one. Here are its mixed media. Okay, now another thing I want to mention here is if you wanted to, rub-ons will resist dye ink that you put on top. So you can do really cool resist 
techniques. And I did that in the live that I have linked below where I did a lot about um, using these transfers. Let me go ahead and trim a little bit off the top here. All right. So next, I'm going to put this onto a card front, and then Lila is going to have to pick her sentiment. This is Hero Arts Plum. Plum. It's a beautiful color. It, I love it with like lighter pinks. I think it's just a nice dark. Okay. So this is uh, Alta New Double Sided Adhesive. I'm going to put that on the front of a white note card. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. This adhesive sheet is cut a little bit smaller, so I didn't have to worry about lining it up too much. Press that down. And then peel this off. And now I'll put this onto it. Let me find my... I'm at the point of the live where I can't find anything on my desk. Oh, here are two here. Who is it? Is it Kelly? Is it... Who is it? I bet it's Kelly. Tammy? Okay, so I'm just putting this in the corner here so I can just push right down onto it and I know it'll line up. Now everywhere you see a flower or leaf or butterfly, we have uh, adhesive that is exposed. Hang on, I'm dropping things. So I'm going to take my release paper and press that all down. So that, that die cut is really pressed into the Alta New adhesive sheet. The thing with Alta New adhesive sheets, one of the things I like is that you have some time to move things around until you really press it down. And once you press it down, it'll hold well. So I then pressed it down and anywhere again, any of these white openings, there's adhesive exposed. So we can do inlay. All right, it's Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Kelly is, uh, Kelly, I've known for a long time, and she is an incredible card maker, and she does a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff at Hero Arts. Kelly, I was just saying that I want to bring Aaron on here. We need Aaron here, one of my favorite humans. If Aaron could run for president, we would be in a good place. Okay, um, I am going to start in lane, and then we'll bring Lila back in. But what I have here, one of the things I did this weekend, because I have no life, is I... Did I remember how I said I die cut a bunch of these? I glued two or three die cuts together so they'd be nice and thick. You don't have to do that. So I can now pop these in and they'll have a little bit of dimension. And I'm just going to kind of go randomly. No, just somewhat randomly put these in. You could definitely do one die cut if you wanted to. Totally your preference. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to really press it down with the bone folder. To go into that adhesive. You could also use liquid adhesive for this. It really doesn't matter. And then, because I like dimension, well, no, I'm going to keep doing this. And I have green for the leaves. And Lila's going to come over and show us what she's got. You ready, Lila? Mm -hmm. Or have you lost interest? Yep. Yes, Kristen, in some ways I don't. Oh, Tasneem from Altenu is here. I was just using your, your adhesive. What is that? Has name. Altenu and Hero Arts are, are friends. They work really well together. What? That's fine. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look at that with the glitter all around it. See how close it goes up to it? That die cuts right up close to it. Isn't that neat? So now Lila is going to take her scissors and trim all the excess white around the edge. Let's so just trim right up against the edge of that silver. I'll put you back on screen. There we go. Okay, she'll be back on screen. And I'm just going to start placing these, and then I'll show you what I want to do next. So a lot of this here that I'm doing where I'm inlaying, I'm going to do this off screen just so this live isn't too long. And I will, again, finish this card and um, uh, share it on my blog in the next couple days. But I'm putting these die cuts right into the openings so I'm following a pattern. Now keep in mind, you could take these die cuts, let's see, you could take these and layer some together in different ways and make like a little bouquet to put on the card. Uh, you don't have to follow this pattern, but I, I like following the pattern. I think it's fun too. And I think these flowers are so cute. Look at how cute these are layered up. Zoop. Isn't that cute? So you can use these separate from the background. I love the look of the background. Now what I can do here now, watch. I can offset some on here. So we're going to have lots, lots of different things going on here. And then we'll have that white script in the background. 
Uh, I don't need this for all of them. Okay, actually I'll put one here. I'm just trying to space out my cards. So I'm gonna start gluing some of these down while Lila cuts. And Lila, you're gonna have to pick out a sentiment. Okay, that's the hardest part. Well, I, let me show you some options. I've got some good options. I've got one I think you'll probably like because my guess is you're going to want to do this, give these cards to a friend. Am I right? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. So I have the perfect die for that. Okay, I need to put Here we go. Something heavy on that. All right, look at Lila's. Here, I'm going to switch. You can, you can stay by me here. Look at that. Uh, let me get you a note card to glue that on. I think next time Lila should craft by herself because man, she's she's good. Okay, so now you can glue. <laughs> Christy, that's funny. Um, put glue on the back there and put it on the front of a note card. Yeah, glue. And hold on, you, you can do it right here. Now this is bigger than our note card. Should we do a bigger? Let's do a bigger card. Hang on. I put a bigger trim on there. So her card will be a little bit bigger than normal. But what we can do is put it in a bigger envelope. A6 envelope is one of my favorite size. That. No, you don't. Yes, See, I told you she loves glue. More glue. No, Gina's glue. A little goes a long way. How many times have I told you? Do you want a white trim or no? Okay. Or write it. Oh, let's do white trim. Yep. Yeah. Okay, now let's put something heavy on that. And then get your thing that Oh, here it is. Got my lock there. Now let me go back over to this side. Somebody said question, but they didn't ask the question. Oh, Sylvia, let us know what your question is. Um, a black frame would be, yeah, black glossy cardstock is one of my favorites too. Okay, so I'm just going to start popping these little guys in here. Now these teeny little flowers here, I'm not stacking those. I'm going to just put one die cut in and be, and be happy with that. I think that would be fine. No, 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 no. Not fun. Easy. Easy. Okay. Oh, do you see any other questions? I'm looking. Oh. Um, I'm going to show you a sentiment that you can do. All right. Hang on here. Let me just glue these this guy down. Do a little bit smaller one like that. This isn't very heavy. It's heavy enough. That's all it needs to be. Because... This is made of acrylic, I believe, this and this is, is crystal. Heavy. They're about the same weight, but this one's bigger because if we did a crystal one like this, it would be really expensive and really, really heavy. All right, so I'm gonna keep in laying here. This will look much better once all the white is covered up with uh, color. Okay, Sylvia got her question. Uh, tips for intricate die cutting from glitter paper, my machine. Okay, if you have struggle, if you struggle with um, die cutting a background with intricate dies, or with, with glitter paper. So like, I, if you saw me cut this, what I did is I went in and I added a shim in between my cutting plates. So, did you just add that question on there? How do you know how to do that? She's gonna put me out of a job and Mike. Susan, Susan's here. Susan, I was talking about how you were bringing up that video of Lila where she was throwing cards everywhere, or envelopes everywhere. Um, if, if, so if I have a die that I want, like a big intricate die like this that I want to cut through this heavyweight glitter paper, I'll put in a shim, an extra shim, and that goes like in between your cutting plates or on the back behind the die. Um, and I usually will run it through more than once, and that will usually do the trick. All right, here's Lila's. Look at that. She's now taking over Mike's job. Yes, I do make masculine cards, but honestly... I give like floral cards to guys too. There's flowers in their world. So I do have some masculine cards. I, um, you know, a lot of times I'll just change up the images, the, the techniques that, um, that I use to work for whoever I'm making it for, you know? Okay, so Lila, here's an option you can do. Oh, I like that one. All right, come here. I'm not doing your work. Come on. Okay, well, there's a question. <laughs> Um, Sharon asked, will I be resuming Closet Craft Chat in the future? Closet Craft Chat was a, like, podcast kind of, well, it was video, but just interviews that Christina and I did over at Online Card Classes where we talked to different companies. We should do that again. Did you just do that? No, not, oh, uh, yeah, she's adding the questions. I yes, Mike is blown away. 
Okay, so this is the Hero Arts Smile and Friend stamp set, and then there's the dies. So you have Smile and Friend. Lila, I think there's another one. I'm going to cut black. I think that's the best. Uh, someone asked what my favorite double sided adhesive sheets are. I like the Altenew double sided adhesive sheets. Mike can add those to the list. Mike, do you mind doing that? That's what I used for. I don't know how. <laughs> that's what I used um, for that pink background when I added it to the note card. I took over my shirt. I use that a lot. And um, yeah, I have, I bought a couple Christmas or Black Fridays ago when it was on super sale. I bought a huge, huge stack. And I, the stack is running lower, but I, I love those. Okay, what? Uh, Alternate double sided adhesive what sheets. What work are you not doing for me? Here, you can glue. So I cut friend for you. Because you said you liked friend, right? So glue this right. Glue this right on top of here. Just a little glue. And then we're going to put it on there. And we can choose to do a little sentiment strip underneath it if you want. Um, you could also put like a. Let's see. I have some butterflies somewhere. Should we do hello, my friend? Or, or just friend? Do whatever you What's want. What's your favorite ink color? What's my favorite? Oh, I saw that one a while ago. What's my favorite ink color? I can't find anything. What's your favorite ink color, Lila? Uh, I don't know. I like the the light purple with the line. Let me see what it's called. Passion for Lila. Yeah. yeah. You can say or Gina. You like some of Gina K's colors too. It could yes, I do. I do. All right. Hang on. I can't find the little butterflies. Mike, where are my butterflies? Hang on. Oh, I see them. Do you want to do a little butterfly on here, Lila? I, like I really like this set too. This is the butterfly foliage. It does these this little fun little grassy kind of border. I didn't cut those out yet. You can add little flowers to it and little butterflies. So she likes this. This is, uh, oh, let me guess, Lovely Lavender. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, from Gina. It's so that's color. probably one of my favorites. All uh, right. Mike, I saw another question. So this goes with the Smile Friend. No. Um, did, Kristen asked, did I double up all of these? Uh, I'm not. I'm only doubling up the bigger ones. These tiny ones, I'm not going to bother. I'll just inlay those. But you don't have to double up. It would save you a lot of time if you didn't. I just kind of like doing that. All right, she's ditching me over here. Yeah, there's a question. What? Yeah, this was asked a long time ago. I'm sorry. Um, when do you need to? When do you know when you need to re-ink your stamps? When do you know when you need to re-ink your stamps? You know what? Uh, let me see if I can find one that needs re-inking. I bet I can find one. Just a second, I'll show you. Um. Hmm. Maybe this one will need ranking. So this is Green Hills. I use this one a lot. No, I think this one might be okay. If I go like that, yeah, see? When you go like this and it not much ink comes down, it should be a good amount of ink coming down. So like Butter Bar, I just re-inked. And so see, more ink comes down. Actually, that'll get better. See how it hasn't absorbed in yet? But more ink will come down. So that's usually how I do it. What? Hmm? I took over Mike's job. Okay, Lila has. I saw a good question, but I lost it. See, these are not doubled up in those little spots. Ah, yes. All right. Um, let's put this there we go. This one's good. And then I'm. I will go back and put like little pearls or gemstones in the center of the flowers. Let's see here. Another question? Yep, I got one. Um, what about you that inspires me the most? You are really hardworking. Yes. Very, very, very hardworking. Yep. I love what I do. All the time you're working, and that inspires me to do my best. It inspires her to do her best. See? You're sweet. Here's another one. Thank you. How many hours a day do you spend crafting? Um, I used to spend more crafting than I do now. I recently cut back pretty significantly. Um, so now a few hours. Um, 
I mean, I, go, I work out every day in the middle of the day, so that takes a chunk. And then she gets home from school at 3, and I always come upstairs then. So a few hours a day. Okay. Um, wha, what is the name of the sentiment strips transfer that you used on your window card? Um, it should be in the supply list. Uh, let me look. It is called With Sympathy. With yeah, sympathy. Yeah. So, um, so these rub ons, I'm sorry, uh, so these rub ons are better than the memory box ones from the olden days. Ah, memory box. I think, make, are you thinking making memories? I don't know that memory box. I know memory box has them now and they're great quality now. I just, I remember some from some scrapbook companies back in the day. They worked great, but that you had to be really careful. I feel the, these are a little more forgiving. I love your background sense. or your um, your profile picture. Who we just put up on the screen? Did you oh. see it? Oh, I did. There's a dog. A dog. It was a very cute. Puppy. We're pro dogs, aren't we? Yes. We like the dogs. I don't know what I'm doing. So I will continue to do this and fill these in, and I'll also layer some up. See, how I've layered some of these. So do you want me to glue this? Um, and I will probably do a friend also. But yes, Lila, you can. You can glue yours together and choose what sentiment you want. Glue. She loves her glue. All right, Mike, are there any other questions? Um, what is the type of glitter cardstock you used before? Ah, you might want to add that the... to supply. Is it in the supply list? Yes. It's all yes. to new Dazzle. I think it's Dazzling Diamond. Is that yeah, what it's it is called? Yeah, it's in the supply list. It's in the supply list. The glitter paper that she used. I'll have it... to go to the link and read. Yeah, you might have to refresh the page for things to be added that we are adding as we go. But it comes in smaller sheets, like a pack of smaller sheets, um, or now it comes in the full size sheet. And I, I love it. It's the glitter paper I use the most because I don't know if you can tell. See here, silver next to it. See, it's a little bit warmer and lighter than silver, but not as warm as gold. It's very light. I don't know. I added too much glue. Of course she added too much glue. That's what we do, right? We like the glue. I forgot I would sprout out the sides. That's okay. And now it doesn't look as good. No, no that'll fine. dry. The glue dries clear. Yeah, I know. Okay. So what sentiment do you want to, do you want to put like you brighten my day underneath it? Or do you just want to put friend? You what brighten you... my dandy? Day. No, my day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she th thought it said you brighten my dandy. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Um, what do you want to uh, use? Or you can just put friend. Whatever. It's your choice. It's going to your friend. I'm deciding who I want to take okay. it also. Oh, I know. Okay. She's thinking about who to give it to. You could I know who to give it to. It does dry clear, so you don't have to worry. Yes, it does look like a... That's it. Rita, you're right. It looks like a pearl, a lovely pearl, yes. pearl glitter paper. That's exactly That right. is exactly what it... Well said. Bravo. Okay, I found I found the one of these. Okay, which one? I will always be there for you. I bet I know who this is going to then. Does it start with an M? Yeah. I thought it might. I thought it might. That's good. That's a good good message to give to a friend. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna help her stamp. I'm gonna show her a trick. <laughs> Mike is over there waving. Mike wants the card. I will always be there for you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this will end up, once all of these are filled in, it'll end up looking less busy when there's no white. But if you wanted to keep it more clean and simple, you could have skipped the white rub on and maybe done some tone-on-tone -tone stamping on the plum. But I really like that look. And remember, you have all of these with the uh, transfer on it. Um, Question, Lila, do your friends stamp too? Do your friends stamp too? Um... Tell her what you did yesterday. Well, yesterday we, I had a friend over. Mike, can you put it on the screen? Yeah. Um, I had a friend over and we did some stenciling. I taught her how to do stenciling. But um, one of your crafter friends, actually my best friend. Yeah. Um, her mom is very artistic. She's like a real artist. She is. She's fantastic. And um, I remember my friend using some stamps as one of my birthday cards a long time ago. 
Yeah, so Lucy has done it, but yesterday she had a different friend over and um, she taught her how to do layering stencils. They did some polka dot layered backgrounds, but then we had to leave because for dad's birthday, we went to an old arcade, right? Mm -hmm. Which I'm not sure they really appreciated. I guess for kids who are used to playing the newer video games, those old joystick button games like Dig Dug were really hard for her. So um, anyway, they, uh, she did teach her friend yesterday a new crafter and she loved it. So there would be more, definitely be more. I think it's a good thing. Listen, you know, there are better, her friend is 12. There are a lot of other things a 12 year old could be doing. Let me assure you, I think crafting is one of the safest, right? Okay, we got another one. Okay. What is my favorite subject in school? This is off topic, but I want okay. to answer it. Go for it. My favorite subject is science because we are learning about cells, and I absolutely love cells. Wait, what are you doing? Watch. This is how you know how to cut it nicely. But um, I love learning about cells, and I'm really excited for next year because we're going to be diving deeper into that. Okay. She's a science nerd like her daddy. Colin's a math nerd like me. Okay, so I wanted to make sure I cut this so that it's centered top to bottom. So I put the post-it note, the edge goes right where I want to cut, and then I line up the, the edge of my blade with the edge of the post-it note, and it'll cut exactly where I want it to cut. Also, this is a good question. Something Easier than else. eyeballing. Um, how often do you wash your microfiber cloths, and do you wash them separately, regular laundry soap? You know, I don't do microfiber much anymore. I do these claws. Mike can add them to the supply list. Um, they're super soft. I think they're baby wash cloths. No babies around here. Um, and uh, I, I do it in regular laundry. And I don't clean them all that often. I, once I feel like I haven't cleaned one in a while, I, I switch. Or I, um, I wash them. But I have a bunch of them. The plum um, cardstock you used before, what company was that? I thought it was Hero Arts. Maybe it's old. I don't know, I got a lot of cardstock here. Let me look in my stash. Hang on. So I put scraps of cardstock on the back of hers. So she can have that popped up. Yeah, Hero Arts plum. I don't know that they carry it anymore. Mike, go back to the question. Um, last one. Mike wants to answer that one. Um, not so crafty Mike and Lila, please ask mom to tell two to three types of black ink that are resistant to running with alcohol markers. Okay, um, the one that I find the best is the Gina K Obsidian Black Amalgam Ink. So Amalgam Ink, Obsidian, and I just heat set it. Do you want me to glue this on here for you, or do you want to do it? Okay, <laughs> so you could do it wherever you want, and then just glue this right below it, and if you want, you can glue yeah, like a little butterfly. Yes. Yeah, Maybe just put a little glue on the back of the body. Yes. Yeah, so the wings kind of go up. All right. Do you want to go do that on your spot? Yes. Take Can this. we add me to the? Yep. I already Let's have see. a glue over there, don't I? Yes. I do. Oh wow. Well. There's okay. your glue back. Thank you. So Gina K Obsidian Black is my my favorite, but most companies have one. Hero Arts has one. I think it's called their Intense Black. Um, there are several. There are several. By the way, um, if you are shopping to get that. If you spend $25, remember you get a free stamp and die set. Hero Arts has incredible cardstock. Incredible cardstock. It's super, super thick, heavyweight cardstock. Um, so, this might be a good opportunity to just kind of build up your cardstock stash. All right, while she's finishing gluing hers, I'm going to keep putting these together and I can answer any question, any do additional I question. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. However you want. Oh, I didn't put you in. Hang on. There you are. Yeah. So I put friend down first and then put the sentiment strip underneath it. Up to you. Um, somebody asked if uh, Hero Arts has reinkers. What was it? Do you know if the Hero Arts reinkers they offer on the website now, if they'll work with your old ink pads like the shadow inks? There is a blog post on Hero Arts. Uh, I'll have to go look for it. But they go through which inks are exactly the same from their old line to their new line. And that might be a helpful blog post for you. I think some of them are the exact same color and same ink. So you could use those, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
Um, Mike, what's another question while we both finish up here? I, getting fingerprints and smudges on the card. Mm -hmm. um, how do you avoid that? I guess you don't. Uh, you know, you said, uh, if you've got to... You've got to be tidy. Like my friend Christina Warner, she is the tidiest of crafters. She is like, never gets ink on her fingers. I just, I think some of us are that way and some of us will always be a hot mess. And I think, <laughs> I think it'll just happen. So I think the best thing to do is while you're crafting, maybe have a wet washcloth next to you that you constantly wipe your fingers off on. But I don't, and I get fingerprints everywhere. So I'm not sure I have the best advice to give that's yeah, that's sanding things oh the sanding things oh how to remove it oh she oh. said how to avoid it but... oh yeah and these sanding things they say they save my life and so many cool techniques that you can do all right lila bring yours in so that's mine look at that <sighs> perfect so the butterfly is from this butterfly foliage die set it has a smaller butterfly too. So there's two butterflies in there. So there's a smaller one too. And then also some little little butterfly or little flower die cuts. Look at that. And the black cardstock there is um, was one of my scraps. It's uh, Tim Holtz has the black heavy stock like for alcohol inks or whatever. It's like a matte finish and it is beautiful. Dark, dark, super black, dark cardstock. Keep that up there so people can see it. Um, somebody Pretty? said, any tips for keeping the glitter paste for not, to not dry out? Glitter paste. Okay, the, one of the hardest things to do in crafting is to keep your products, like gels and glitters, keep them, um, what do you call it, like the right, the right consistency to use. A lot of them will dry out over time. It's just natural for some of these products. I would contact, if you have like a, a glitter paste or something that has, um, has dried up, I would contact the company. I know some of them will say you can like add water to it uh, or add something else, but every, I think every company is very different. So I think it really depends. So I personally would reach out to the companies, but I also take this as a, uh, a chance to suggest you use your supplies. Use them before they go bad. So, um, you know, just put them to good use. That's, I think that's my best advice. But if you have some that you really want to bring back to life, I recommend reaching out to the companies and asking what they suggest you do. Uh, so, uh, one good suggestion, uh, Lorene said, um, you, some people, some companies will, or, and even some crafters, I haven't done it, will put, um, press and seal over the jar before they put the lid on and that will keep it from drying out as quickly. Um, ironically, I haven't tried that even though we're a press and seal home. So somebody said, um, the butterfly on my card was the perfect touch. I absolutely agree. Yep. So glad we did that. When in doubt butterfly it up right or what was the expression put a bird on it pick one you could put a bird on. i think it was julie ebersall who must i think she used to say that bird butterfly anything like that so there we go oh missed one so i'm just inlaying different ones here isn't that fun just a fun fun card and remember you could skip that rub on if you want it but i just think that's fun all that on there and i like the bold color around it so I will probably just add little gemstones to the center of those flowers. Maybe I'll layer some more of the little flowers. I don't know. Uh, Mike just added um, the cleaning cloths to oh, the supply cute. list. Mike added the cleaning cloths that I like. These to refresh to the supply list. If you have your supply list open, hit just refresh the browser, and that will um, will add any. It'll add the things that we've recently added to the supply list that we've talked about. Does that make any sense? Probably not. Okay, somebody's asked this question multiple times. Okay. Um, do you go through all of your leftovers, or do you have a large leftover stash? Leftover products, or um, I don't know. Die cuts, scraps. Um, I, I scraps. Scraps. 
cardstock okay. scraps, all that. I I do. I keep my scraps and I try to use them as much as I can. I do. Um, I do have a drawer for each like color family, so I have like. Um, a drawer of like all my yellows, a drawer of all my pinks. And then I, whenever I need a little cardstock, I'll reach for that. If it's a bigger piece, like say I take a full piece of cardstock and only use a little bit, I'll cut the bigger pieces down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I have a bunch of those in a container. I should, I've shown that in a live before. And that allows me to um, you know, reach for that instead of a full sheet next time I need something. Because you don't want to always go for full sheets, you know, if you don't need to. All right, um, two good questions. Yeah. I think from last, like, the last live I appeared on, um, Andrea. Yeah. I saw Andrea, you see that dog? Ah, yes, Andrea's got a cute doggy. Um, she mm -hmm. said, how do you keep track of all of the techniques slash cards that you want to, to that try. you want to try if you can't do it right away? I will tell you. I got a new one that I'm going to do as a giveaway. Good, good thinking. On the top of that card over there, mm -hmm. by your rainbow thank you card, mm -hmm. there's a book. Can you grab that book? I'll show you. Oh, so we do have two giveaways to do. We're going to do this book, and we're going to also do the, the tulip pattern. So if you could pick some winners from the comments and have them ready for me, that would yes. be awesome. Yes. So I'm going to keep gluing. Lila can show you. I put this on my crafty gift guide list. This is a new one that I got to do as a giveaway. Mine is not in the room, so I can't run and get it. But in there, you has everything you could possibly imagine to remember techniques or um, different ideas that you want to try. It is so well done. It was designed by Pam, who um, is actually uh, on the design team for Hero Arts. And like card making techniques I like, Here's the sizes of the different cards, so you don't have to remember. Um, inspiration, so you can list you know, places you like to look. And then, this is my favorite. There's an order tracker, but this is what I like. Here are all of these pages where you can sketch things, you can mention like things you want to use. Well, that's so, a great idea. But there's a lot of space in here to record different things that you might want to remember. That's that's what I do. Like if I want to remember, I remembered I wanted to share um, using embossing folders with vellum and I wanted to remember that. So I wrote that in. So that's, that's how I go about trying to remember things. But let's be clear. I don't remember everything. I don't think anybody does. So you just um, do the best you can. What do you do with all of your die cuts and or um, die cut pieces? What do I do with my die cuts and die cut pieces? The scraps? Uh, this, like the extras. Um, I have a drawer with little containers like this where I have sentiments ready to go. Um, <laughs> Sometimes they go on the floor. Well, this, the, the die cuts I don't need anymore end up on the floor and we scoop them up every once in a while. So your feet look like... So my feet have little die cuts on them all the time. She's, she's telling my secrets. Um, then I also have done a video where I show how I use I will die cut a bunch of sentiments or stamp a bunch of sentiments and then I have like an, a photo album kind of thing that I keep them all in. So a few different options. Here we go. I can even layer, the, see I go crazy. To me, this is one of my favorite things to do in crafting is layer die cuts together. It feels like putting a puzzle together and that's one of my other hobbies. So I think it's fun to just layer all this up. Isn't that fun? Just Okay, makes um, the card even more special to give to somebody. Do you want to answer this I one? I think I need to step away. What? Do you what? want to answer this one? I don't know. If... Oh. When I stamp and stencil, I get crossover from my stamp ink into my stencil color. Any help? Yes. No, you're totally good question. If you stamp first and then you use stencils to color in an image, what I recommend doing is um, is heat setting your ink first. Heat set that ink so you know it's completely dry before you come in and do stenciling on top. If you still have problems, you can heat emboss the image and then do the stenciling on top. So that's another thing that you can do. 
All right, so I'm going to finish this off off screen because we're almost at two hours. I knew today would be long though because I wanted to have a little crafternoon here. Um, I have these few things here. Somebody asked what I do with my old puzzles. I take them apart and do them again later. No. Oh. Somebody asked that. What do I do with my old puzzles? Okay, so let me just go through this. On this card, we did the hero escapes. I will add a sentiment here and I can add my personal message on the inside. I probably will put a little frame around this. I don't know, I gotta play around with that. But I showed you how to do the window with the that floating sentiment. Isn't that fun? And keep in mind, the white rub-ons work well like on a dark colored cardstock. So you can get that bright white sentiment without having to heat emboss. Then here's one where I did the rub-on transfer in the background. I did lots of die cutting, layering. I will finish this off with little gemstones in the center of the flowers, and I'll probably do that friend, or I might use that hello there, put it right there in maybe white. This is um, that freebie that you can get with the information in my description. It's this combo for free. And then Lila's. Oh, there was a question. Oh, what? Huh? Tell them what you did. Oh, so um, what was that stencil called again? The tulip. Pattern, tulip pattern, pattern, tulip pattern, yeah. So there, there's four stencils that go with it. Um, the three colors we use were from Hero Arts. Azalea, Paradise, and Butter Bar. Um, so they just, um, I do kind of like an ombre. Yep. I And then on the second stencil, it's those darker colors. I just do like, um, I just put the ink on. Heavier. Heavier. Yep. And then there's the green colors, which we used the grass one, and then kiwi. Yep. And then, I don't know what the other ones are called. Oh, the the, the colors? Fresh no. lawn and kiwi? Yeah, what? no, well, I'm saying these. Oh, black cardstock. I just stamped with black ink. Okay. And that's from the smile friend combo. And then the butterfly is from? Uh, from the butterfly foliage die set. And then sparkly cardstock. Isn't that is awesome? The sparkly cardstock is the diamond from Altenew. I think we linked all of those in the... See how pretty that is? It looks like snow. It does. We linked them all into the... Supply list. Supply list. Supply list. That's what it's called. Right. I'll probably put that hello there. What, Mike? Need to... Uh... Away. Yes, the uh, Terry mm. said, do the rub-ons work on acetate? That's what I did here. So you've got that floating see-through black on there. So yeah, you can use white on there. You can use it for resist. Again, in my description, I have a link to a video mm. where I show lots of things you can do with them. Lots and lots. Um, okay, we're going to do a giveaway. One of the things that we're going to give away is the die and stencil set that Lila used. And then the other thing we're going to give away is that book. Where'd the book go? It's Okay, she's going to go get the book. So those are the two things we're going to give away. Isn't she great? I'm glad she's here today. If only she could craft with me every day. If I was, if I, if this was my job, I would need this. Yeah, that it's nice. And it's cool. It's Feel it. So I know, it's I slick it. and you can use alcohol markers to color in these flowers. I know. Isn't that cool? Did you color yours? No. Not yet. Can I color yours? You can color mine. Yeah. You can color mine. Okay. So, Mike, do you have any winners? Yeah, for the products. For the products, the tulip stencils and dies. Here we go. The winner is... Catherine Ewing. Catherine Ewing. Yep. And, Catherine, if you go to my website and click contact me and send me an email with your address, we will get that sent to you. Then the other... Uh, winner gets the card maker chronicles, which I will add. The, did you add this to the supply list? Uh, no, I didn't know okay. it came from. It it should be in my in my library. Okay. Because I this was on my crafty gift guide list. Um, so the card maker chronicles, you can get this on Amazon, by the way. Uh, who gets the cra the card makers chronicles? Hopefully, Catherine's still here. I don't see her chats in the. In the... That would be uh, Denise Cooper. Oh, Denise Cooper. Denise. All right. I saw one of her. Um, you can refresh. Images. If you refresh the list, I added this to the bottom of it. Um, so those are our two giveaways. So both 
uh, Denise and what was it, Kathy? Catherine. Catherine. Catherine and Denise, please email me through my website. Uh, another thing I wanted to let you know about is Hero Arts has announced their new Stamp Along. Stamp Alongs are Hero Arts virtual events. And if you are looking for an affordable, laid back, welcoming uh, virtual event, I highly recommend checking out the, um, the uh, Stamp Alongs with Hero Arts. You can take the class, it's like 30 something dollars, I think, and you get the whole day of classes. And you can use the techniques shown with products you have. Or if you want to, you can buy the product bundle or the individual products that you might like separately. So it's nice to have an option of a very affordable class. Um, these classes are taught live, but you can catch the replays, of course. And I think they're fantastic. I always think they're fun. They're welcoming community, comfortable, laid back. Um, I will be a teacher at this next one, and Christina Werner will be one, but there's a bunch of teachers, and I have that linked at the top of my list also. So that is, I don't remember when, but the information is there. So I think that's it. We've talked too much. It's almost two hours now. What do you think? That was really fun. I gotta go make dinner now, because dad's hitting golf balls indoors because there's snow on the ground. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. Let me put this up to here. Thank you for being here and uh, enduring our crazy craftiness. Keep in mind that I do have information in the description about how to get the free stamp and die set with orders of $25 or more at Hero Arts. And thank you to Hero Arts for doing that. Oh, okay. Show them what you have because so, screaming goat. My friend Kathy yeah. sent me this. It's a goat that when you press it, it screams. Because <laughs> if you've never been to one of my lives, Kathy Zilski calls me the goat. The goat. That's why there's goats. Up so there. now we have goats everywhere in my craft room. So I'm anyway, I think that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was nice. Of it. Thank you so much for being here. Everything is linked below. I appreciate your patience as we try this new thing of crafting together. And um, yeah. I hope you'll join us again sometime soon. Thank you so much. Thank Have you. a good day.